Hello students. So today we'll see the topic related to tires. So for that purpose, I want to share my syllabus. Sorry, share my uh, huh, syllabus first. So if we see the syllabus in our syllabus, uh, this, this is the unit number second. And in that uh, our topic is related to wheels and tires. So in that we'll see wheel construction, then alloy wheel, wheel balancing, types of tires, tire construction, tire materials, factors affecting tire life. Okay, so these are the important topics related to this tire. Now we'll see. lecture related to this tire so if we see the introduction the functions becomes only contact with the ground okay so tire are in contact with ground it acts as the primary suspension then cushioning the vehicle from effects of rough surface so as the road conditions are different so rubber material is used in this tire and so that tire acts as a suspension. So this is also called as primary suspension. And uh, the cushioning effect is provided by the tire to the uh, complete vehicle. Okay. So if this uh, road surface becomes rough, then uh, tire takes that uh, bumps and absorbs the vibrations. It provides frictional contact with the road surface, which allows the driving wheel to move the vehicle so here frictional contact takes place in between the tire and the road front tire allows the wheels to steer and tire allows braking to slow or stop the vehicle so if we want to stop the vehicle then we apply the brakes and that brakes uh, are uh, going to stop that wheels if we see the properties of tire so non-skidding is the property then uniform wear load carrying capacity if we see uh, then speed capacity is there, uh, the cushioning and power consumption, noise and balance. These are the properties of tires. So if we see the terminology, then steel wheels are there. Uh, most popular design is there, very strong and cheap to produce. Alloy wheels are there, attractive and lightweight, but expensive and difficult to clean. Uh, the spoke wheels are also available. So used on older vehicles cannot be fitted with tubeless tires. Divided the rims. Rims are made in two halves, which are bolted together. That is, rims must never be separated while the tire is inflated. Split rims are there. So tire is held in place by large circlips. Then plies are there. The layers of strong fabric, which are built up to give the tire its strength and shape. Bead is also there. So loops of steel, which are the anchor point for the piles. Then cross ply tires are there, radial, radial ply tires are there, trade rubber patterns are provided, then provides a grip with the road surface and assist in clearing water away. Side wall, it connects the beads to the trade of the tire. If we see the parts, then beads, two rings that are made of steel wire and encased in rubber, they hold tire side walls snugly against the rim and prevent tire from coming off. Body plies are there. So rubberized fabric and cords wrapped around the beads forms the carcass or body of the tire. Trade outer surface of the tire that comes in contact with the road. If we see the different parts again, then side wall is available. So outer part of the tire that extends from the bead to the trade. Marking on the side wall provides the information about the tire. Liner, thin la layer of rubber that is bonded to the inside of the plies. It provides the leak proof member membrane for tubeless tires. So liner is provided and uh, uh, it is uh, act as a tubeless tire. So belts are also available used to strengthen the body plies and stiffen the trade. It lies between trade and plies. If we see the next, 
that is uh, carbon black add strength and abrasion resistance while protecting rubber against the ultraviolet light during the curing uh, links the sulfur links rubber molecules together adding the strength and giving the rubber resistance to both heat and cold then uh, zinc stearate is there the small amount of zinc stearate and waxes helps control curing rate prevent the oxidation and make rubber easier to process and if we see the next that is accelerators are used to control the cure rate so different types of rubber can cure fully in same amount of time antioxidants and anti ozonants are added to rubber to fight degradation by oxygen and ozone which can shorten the life of tires if we see the tire cutaway so then this is the base this is the trade this is the center line second belt is provided this is the first belt then this is the side wall this is the veneer then white wall is there rim cushion is provided then bead is provided filler is provided there then liner is available first ply and this is the second ply so all these are related to cut section of the tire bias ply tire construction this is the trade then this is the plies one of the oldest design this bias ply tire becomes the oldest design several textile plies are laid across each other running from bead to bead in alternate directions number of plies depends on the size of the tire and the load it it has to carry same number of plies is used on crown and the side walls so plies run at an angle from bead to bead does not use belts allows body of the tire to flex easily improved cushioning and smooth ride on rough roads weakness reduce the traction at high speed and increase the rolling resistance if we see the next bias ply tire with belts added to increase the tread stiffness belts do not run around the side walls they lay under the tread area only belts and plies run at different angles offer some reduction in rolling resistance over a bias ply tire provides the smooth ride and good traction then plies run straight across from bead to bead has a very flexible side wall and stiff tread giving it a very stable footprint if we see this diagram consists a carcass ply formed by textile arcs running from one bead to other each ply is laid at an angle of 90 degrees to the direction the tire rolling at the top of the tire crown under the tread a belt made up of several plies reinforced with metal wire is laid reinforcement is required if we required or we want to increase the strength at particular region then we use rein reinforced area so reinforced with metal wire is laid this crown ply is laid one on top of the other overlap at an angle determined by the type of the tire if we see the advantages of radial ply tires side walls can bend easily its shock absorbing capacity is 25% more than bias ply or cross ply lower rolling resistance and hysteresis loss leads to less fuel consumption longer tread life because of less heat build in tire braking efficiency on wet roads is better because of greater side walls flexibility and tread stiffness better steering characteristics this tire shows the steering characteristic good while taking turns it has less tendency to distort and lift off the road from one side larger resistance to puncture cuts and impacts in the trade area so these are the advantages if we see the diagram related to bias contact patch and radial contact patch these are the diagrams so bias contact patch if we see on the front portion the uh, this portion is slightly on the upper re region or it is slightly on the uh, upward direction but in case of radial contact patch this patch is in contact with the ground if we see the uh, front view of this non directional tires or oh, uniform grooves are provided which can run in any directions so unidirectional tires are there if we see the grooves grooves are provided here in one direction directions of rotations is clearly marked if we observe this diagram so this is called as grooves okay 
So see these diagrams. If we see the uh, sketch of the tubeless tire, then this is the cross section of the tires. This portion is called as crown area and uh, this horizontal distance from this point to this second point, this is trade width. If we see on the right side, this portion is called as shoulder. If we see here, one notch is provided and uh, here belt is uh, shown. So inner liner is provided, then casing ply is provided, then side wall is available here. Bead area is also available. And this is the fitting arrangement, which is provided in this tubeless tire. So this portion is called as tubeless bead area. So bead toy is available, bead wire is available here. Okay. If we see the advantages, large number of advantages are available in tubeless tires. That is a lesser unsprung weight. This is the main characteristic in this tire. If we see the cooling rate, the better cooling rate is available in case of these tires because in our regular uh, tube type of tires, the friction is higher in amount and so uh, heat takes place in that case. But if we compare this, then uh, friction is less in this uh, tubeless tires and uh, due to that, uh, cooling rate is high. Lesser rolling resistance. This is again another feature in these tires. So rolling resistance is less. Comfortable riding is available. Slower leakage of air. If the vehicle gets puncture, then also it is possible to move at some distances. So simpler assembly is available there. Improved safety. If we see the tire sidewall markings, then uh, some numbers are provided like P195 oblique 75 R140, sorry, 1492S, M and S. So every number or every letter has some meaning. For example, if we see the P letter, capital letter P, which shows passenger tire is there. 195 is available after the P, then that shows that the section width, which is 195 mm. Then uh, 75, that is the aspect ratio or profile. So this aspect ratio is nothing but profile of that tire. That is percentage of section width. So 75% section width is available in this case. After that, capital R letter is provided and that is related to radial construction. This 1-4 is related to rim diameter and this rim diameter is in inches. Then 9-2, that is load carrying index, maximum load per tire. S is speed rating of the tire, 180 kilometers per hour. Uh, that is S, speed rating is uh, measured in terms of this kilometers per hour. And uh, M and S, that is nothing but suitable for mud and snow. So M and S is marked on the tire. The meaning is that which is suitable for mud and snow conditions. So this much information is available on tire itself. If we see the side of the tire, this number is provided. And this is the designation of that number. If we see the speed rating, the speed rating symbols are also provided. That is rating symbols becomes, if we consider the B, capital letter B, the speed is 50 kilometers per hour and speed in miles per hour is also available. That is 31, 31 miles per hour. If we consider the B, speed rating is B. If we take, that is a lot of range is available in case of speed rating from B to Y. If we consider the, for example, W, then speed, becomes 270 kilometers per hour. And if we see the speed in miles per hour, so 169 miles per hour, this is the speed for this condition. Load rating is also available. So load index, for example, if we consider the first number 71, here load in kilograms becomes 345 kilograms load is, uh, which is taken by that wheel. If we see the load index 91, 
the meaning is that load which is 615 kilograms this this much load that tire can take single tire can take okay so trade patterns if we see already we see different diagrams related to the trade pattern so this is performance summer then all weather conditions if we want to use the vehicle then this type of trade patterns may be used if the environment is weight type of environment for that purpose this type of uh, trade patterns becomes used all terrain conditions this is the structure and mud condition then the gap becomes uh, larger okay so these are the trade patterns what, what are the different problems occur in case of that tire then feathering is the major pro problem so improper alignment due to that the feathering takes place if we see this diagram on the right side this is feathering takes place what is that it worn or damage the steering or suspension parts and hard the cornering cupping problem is also there it wants or damage the steering or suspension parts and improper balancing is the major issue here if we see a one edge or if, if we see the one edge is damaged so improper alignment due to that uh, this tire uh, problem occurs if we see the mechanical irregularities, so this is toy action and this is view from top side. This is left and this is right uh, direction view of this condition. Then trade wear markings are also provided. For example, if we want to check the trade wear then we use some measuring instrument so this instrument is called as wear measuring tool second method is also available so by using the coin that is also available for measuring this trade wear out okay so they insert the coin and how much coin that deep into that groove okay from that they identify how much wearing takes place. Then third method is available that is trade wear indicator. So that trade wear indicator is placed in that gap and uh, how much portion gets wear out that is measured with the help of this method. Then different types of tires are available like nitrogen tires. So it makes up around 80% of the air. Then dry inert gas is provided here. If it is less reactive than oxygen. So different features are available in case of nitrogen tires. Then special service tires are also available. Some care must be taken for that tires. That is trade depth must be not less than 1.6 millimeter over the central three quarters of the tire and it must go all the ways around the circumference in a continuous unbroken band with no bald patches anywhere on the tire trade okay if the trade portion is gets uh, wear out then accident may take place if radial and cross ply tires are fitted to the same vehicle radial ply tires must be fitted on the rear then cross ply and radial ply tires must never be fitted on the same axle. If we provide on the same axle, then here also slipping takes place and due to that condition, accident may happen. Then tire pressure must be set to the manufacturer's recommendations. If the rec uh, manufacturers recommend, it, uh, recommend some values for the tire pressure, then you maintain that value. Okay. Or else the wearing takes place. Then uh, if we see the different uh, profiles, these are the different profiles of the tire. So this is 15 inch, then this is 16 inch, 17 inch, and this becomes the uh, joining 
of the uh, that is uh, tires. So 195, 205, then 215. These are the different designations for that. Then wheel, ba wheel basics. If we see the wheel basics, then uh, this is the cut section view of the rim. Then uh, this profile is related to the center section uh, here. Center section is welded to the rim. Then uh, this is pilot bore fits to the hub. Then center mounting section. So most standard wheels are made of steel. Generally steel materials are used for making the tire. Some vehicles are fitted with alloy wheels that are made of magnesium or aluminum. So for increasing the properties, some alloy materials are also provided like corrosion resistance material is added, then hard surface, we require the hard surface. So some uh, alloys are again inserted. So due to that, this magnesium and aluminum material is inserted in this steel material. The rim holds the tire, wheel of the, uh, uh, the wheel allows the tire to be removed and refitted. This is called as flange height. This is rim diameter. This is bead seats and this is rim width. Then uh, if, if we consider the cross section, two pieces split side rings are provided here. This is split side ring. This is the rim. And in second diagram, this is continuous side ring. Then this is split lock ring and this is a rim. different topic uh, these are the different parts related to tire so in this way we finish our today's lecture you know in this lecture we see introduction related to tires then which type of materials are used for making the tires then different types of tires so all this type of informations we learn in today's lecture so we'll stop here thank you